I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. So, haven't seen y'all since Thursday, and you know, the election, uh, that the midterm election that I call the stay out of my bedroom midterm election, looks like uh, it turned out to be un, not what many of the prognosticators and pollsters were saying that it was going to be. And I just want to kind of break it down. If you got a moment, you got some time, you got some place to go, you know, you, if you don't have a place to go, let me take some time and kind of break down what happened. Uh, and I'm not going to get into all the, the weeds of the details of names of various senators and congresspersons and all that kind of a thing. I just want to give a general overview of what happened. What was expected to happen, there was going to be a red wave where uh, the Republicans were going to pick up as many as 40 seats because traditionally, uh, that has been what happens. The party that has the presidency in the first term usually loses seats in the Congress. The long-legged Mac Daddy Barack Hussein Obama lost 63 seats. I think Tribulation Trump in the year 2018 lost 40-some seats, 43 or 50 seats. So it usually happens that way. It's just how the party in control loses the House. This time, they were expecting something similar because this is Joe Biden, my time, his first uh, midterm, and it was expected that he was going to lose big time as well. It didn't happen. And I want to try to tell you why it didn't happen. Uh, I think that people were logically in posters in terms of the way they calculate these things and do the, the algorithms of these things were accurate, but they left out some major uh I suppose, entries into the process. The, the mid, what happened here, and it basically got me summed up this way, uh, as, that young women came out and voted. I think it was in May when the Dobbs decision came out, when you know, the six Supreme Court justices struck down Roe versus Wade. It was a hot ticket topic for quite a number of May, June, July, and by August and September, it had kind of waned. And the inflation gas prices had skyrocketed to $5 plus. You know, even in Shannon, North Carolina, gas was $5 a gallon. And out west, out there in, in Los Angeles, over $7 a gallon. So people began to focus on, you know, the economy. Stupid. Uh, in, in, in milk over $5 a gallon, eggs, $4 a carton, bread, hamburger. I mean, prices are increased by 20 30% in some areas, rents went up, the interest rate went up, inflation was going all over everywhere uh, and, and, and affecting everybody's lives. Everybody was being touched by it, especially people who were middle class or low income. And so a large number of people said, even though abortion is a major issue, right now, it, the pollsters were reporting that the number one issue on America's mind was inflation. And it was true. And it's still true. However, what they seem to have failed to have recognized that a large number of young women and young men and older women and older men also were concerned that they couldn't abort children. They couldn't abort their babies. And that, that wasn't maybe the most important thing but it was the most consistent thing. I heard, you know, one prognostic, one person who was a pundit said that, you know, the, the economy, that having a child is an economic issue. Once you have the child, you got to support it. And so between what was the most important issue, which was inflation, but the most consistent issue was that a large number of women, both male and female, uh, no, not we're a female woman, both Republican and Democrats, what I want to say, because as many Republican women came out and voted for Democrats because they want to preserve the right to have an abortion. And that was just a sleeper on many of the pundits. And therefore, it just wiped away what would have been a red wave. They're trying to tout that Joe Biden has done a great job. He's made a lot of accomplishments. That is not true. But it, it was it was what that is what that if you will conservative court did in ruling in striking down Roe versus Wade. Women and men came out from both Republican and Democrat to vote against the Republicans for taking away that right and that privilege. 
And then Lindsey Graham the other day with his crazy self, his hypocritical self came out two months ago and proposed a federal ban striking down states like New York and California that have state laws that permit abortion, even though Roe versus Wade is no longer the law of the land. New York State and, and, and California and other states have laws. Lindsey Graham proposed a proposal that would strike down New York having um, a, 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 a legal abortion. Right here in New York, uh, Bob Jackson sent me a note the other day and said to me, he said that, uh, you know, if the Republicans lose the House, if the Republicans don't gain the House, I mean, if the Democrats lose the House, it'll be because they lost four major seats Four red, four blue seats right here in New York State were turned red. I mean, New York State is about as blue as it gets, about as Democrat as you can get. But people voted Republican, so it is. It wasn't just, it wasn't just inflation. It was that abortion thing that I call the bedroom issues. And as a result of that, young women, they just didn't expect that many young women to come out because they don't come out in midterm election. They came out of the colleges. They came out of high school. Some may have come out of kindergarten. If they're old enough, 18 years old to vote. And women voted both Republican and Democrat. And they voted against, they voted against uh, the Republicans. Republican women voted against Republicans. And then, of course, I mean, you know, this guy, Dr. Oz, out there in, in Pennsylvania, he was favored to win over that boy, John Fetterman. And, uh, but the women gave that, gave that because Oz was definitely, he tried to be moderate and say he would, would consider abortion under some circumstances. At least I thought, think he did. But the problem is this, and that's what happened. It was the matter of the bedroom. The, the abortion issue is why 72%, 72% of the votes that were cast in this midterm election were cast for Democrats. And the so-called big lie, uh, I would say, and I'm not here supporting tribulation Trump. I'm not here to do that. You know I'm not. But I don't think the big lie, the so-called big lie, I don't think he's dead. A lot of people out there not talking about Trump's over with Trump's finished. It. Well, I'll have another segment on that, and I'll be more detailed. But the big lie is not dead. It's just that abortion is still alive. That's what happened. And so it looks like now over the weekend that the Democrats were able to keep the Senate. And I don't, you know, I'm not prognosticating, but if you ask me for my opinion and what I think, I think Herschel Walker is going to get his lunch eaten by Raphael Warnock on the 6th of December. And they're going to have 51 senators. I, I think that boy, he's going he, he to get his butt whooped. Herschel Walker going to get his butt whooped real good by Raphael Warner because the people of Georgia, uh, they're going to vote the same way they voted uh, in the general election. And a lot of women are not going to come out to vote for Herschel Walker. They came out to vote for Kemp, so since they were there, they probably gave Herschel Walker some play. But I think they're going to have 50, I'm not prognosticating, but I think there will be a 51 seat majority, which is probably, you know, going to drive Mitch McConnell up the wall. He may resign. But I don't think this is the end of Trump. I think both parties misread the, uh, the, the, the process. When I come back, I'm going, to, I'm going to deal with understanding the control of the House and Senate. When I get back, but I, I, I have to tell you what has happened is that the Gen Zers, that's what they call them. This is the youngest of the voting age, Gen Zers. The Gen Xers are that, as a group that's a little bit older than them. They were out there voting. And somehow the little posters didn't call them. You know, I've never been called by a poster in my entire life. Nobody's ever called me and asked me who I'm going to vote for, what I think, or what I think about it. No one has ever called me. So I don't know who these, who, these, who these posters calling. They ain't never called me and I've been my phone will ring. I don't know who it is they've been talking to. But they surely, I'm not sure that they got it wrong. There, there was a red wave. It was. No, there was. Because the races were tighter than two peas in a pot. I mean, the, the, even the races that were won by Democrats over Republicans, these races were razor thin. 
There was a red wave. It's just that the abortion, the, the red wave, and if you'll allow me to title this teaching or this segment, the red wave was that Republicans voted for Democrats. That was a true red wave. That, that, that's exactly what happened. And I don't think the posters were able to pick that up. I think they misinterpreted how women want to have an abortion. And they don't, you know, even, they may like Donald Trump. They may like Jim Jordan. Heck, Marjorie Taylor Greene may have voted Democrat. Lauren Boebert's out there now in Colorado fighting for her life to hold on to her seat. No, there was a red wave. It was Republicans voting for Democrats. Me? Well, I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. I'll be right back.